Welcome back to another Frosty Gaming tutorial on HTML5. So here we've got our web page that we made last time and what it looks like in the browser. Today we're going to be talking about attributes. Now HTML elements can have what we call attributes. They provide additional information about that element. They're always specified in the starting not the ending tag. Attributes come in name value pairs. Name equals value. All right. I'm just going to take you through a few attributes to give you a good idea. The first one is going to be the language attribute. If we go to the HTML, this is defining the HTML page, we can actually add a lang attribute. Now this is just designating the language for the web page. So we've got equals quotations en for English, so two letters for the, the language, and then if there's a dialect, you'll do two more letters after a hyphen, and ours is US, so English US. The reason you'd want to put this attribute here is for screen readers, so they know what language they're supposed to be reading to people in, as well as search engines. Next is the title attribute. So if we go to this P, we can add a title to this paragraph. And this might not be what you think. Let's just say uh, my first paragraph, actually. And then we're going to change what's in the paragraph, the stuff that I have, this random stuff. This can be whatever you want. Just put it in between the, the paragraph tags, and that's going to be the text that comes up. So we can actually just save this, and then we can go back to our web page, and it's right there. As you see, the title, my first paragraph, is not showing up on the page. That's because it's basically a tooltip. If you go hold your cursor over the paragraph, you'll see that my first paragraph shows up. And so yeah, that's how the title attribute works. Next is the href attribute. Now this is probably the most important one that I'm going to be showing you because you're going to use this more than anything else. So we're going to do a tag called a. Now basically, to me, this means it's a link. So a href, where do we want this to link to? Let's just go ahead, http, http colon slash slash www.google.com. And we're linking to Google. So this is a link to Google. And then we will end that. So we can save this, go back. And now we have this hyperlink, which links to Google. And if you're wondering how I click that open in a new tab. I just middle click my mouse in Chrome and it opens that in a new tab. That's the href. Next I'll show you some size attributes. Let's say we have an image. Our web page is saved here. So if we have an image in the same directory like this smashing.jpg, Nigel Thornberry, then we can actually access it on the browser. So this is smashing.jpg. So if we do source, which is an attribute, we can do smashing.jpg. Now, this has to be named exactly the same thing that it's named here in order for it to access it. And then we can do a width, and we'll say 200 pixels, and height. Sorry, forgot how to spell that for a second. And there we go. Now we have this image. So if we go back, refresh and we've got that and that looks kinda crappy so I'm actually going to uh, do a break line real fast and if we refresh this if you don't realize what I'm doing when I'm going back and forth right here uh, if there's a circle here it's not saved so I will control s to save it in the same place as the same document name and then when I go here I am clicking control R to refresh the page and show any changes. So when we added that break line, this was brought down one, and we've got our picture, and it's showing. And so I'll show you, let's say that this is spelled wrong, right? And I just saved it, go back, then it'll give us this, this thing, right? What if there is no source at all? And we save it, and we go back. Then it's just gonna give us an empty box like there isn't actually an image there. We're gonna want stuff like some text to explain what should be here if it's not being displayed. And that is an alt tag. So Nigel Thornberry Smashing is what should be there. So we save it, we go back, 
and it actually shows it up here. Now, if we do have the image, then it is not going to show the alt tag. But if, let's say, a blind person is trying to read, or have a, has a screen reader that reads this word by word to them so they know what's on the page, and gets this image, they can't see that image, so they then get Nigel Thornberry smashing so they can get a, a good idea of what's supposed to be there. That's about it for the attributes. There's a few tips that I'm going to talk about. You always want to use lowercase attributes. And this, this goes back to the same reason we use lowercase tags. It's for older versions of HTML that require it. You always want to use quotes around attribute values, and I can actually show you exactly why you wouldn't. So, because there are spaces here, it's not going to know what to do with the first and paragraph if there are no quotes there. We can save it, and we can refresh it. It didn't break, but if we hover over, it's just going to say my, because that's all it thinks is there for the title is my. Also, single or double quotes. I use double quotes a lot. A lot of other people use double quotes. It's the most common, but you can use single quotes. That's fine. However, if you want to use double quotes, let's say I wanted to actually have my title be my in quotes first and then paragraph. paragraph. So it would be something like this. Ah. So this is not going to work. Obviously, it thinks that my space is the only thing for the title, and then it has no idea what this garbage is. But if we change these two single quotes, we now have my single quotes first paragraph. And we can do this same with double quotes and, sorry, single quotes on the outside. So if you wanted to add double quotes or single quotes inside of your uh, value, then you could do that kind of thing. So my double quotes par first paragraph. Another reason you want to use quotes on your value is for older versions that require it as well. That's basically it for attributes. Um, so we're starting to get into some more complex stuff. In the next video, I'm gonna explain using the Google Chrome Inspector a little bit because in this video, we were saving and refreshing a lot. Well, you can actually just do this live in Chrome using the inspect element. And this is actually what I use for professional web development. So you're getting all the tools you need. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, then leave them down below. I'll get back to you next time. See ya.